Salutations, everyone. What's the easiest way to kill off something beloved? What's a more effective way of killing something? Well, in terms of a prolific franchise, one way would be oversaturation, either from the creators or the fans of said franchise. Today, we're mainly looking at the side of the creators and how they could kill off what could have been or once was a massive phenomenon. Nowadays, you'll find loads of franchises that people would say are oversaturated, such as Marvel, Transformers and Mario. And while there is an argument for the ones I've listed off, they're all still standing. Marvel continue to make lots of money with their movies and TV shows, Mario gets more video games, and Transformers? They're chillin' I guess. Today I want to talk about some IPs that are dead due to greedy corporations, ones that almost died and then got saved, and how it affects the general public's view. So, let's get on with it. Our first look into the oversaturated market is a little indie game that blew up in a matter of weeks, one that got followed up by sequel after sequel in such a short amount of time. That's right, it's none other than Five Nights at Freddy's. I seem to have attracted a mob. Before the fanbase gets the pitchforks and starts brandishing them, let me explain. For those of you who don't know, have you been living under a rock? Five Nights at Freddy's is a game series created by Scott Cawthon all the way back in 2014. Since then, the series has Jesus Christ entries, all in the space of six years. Do you see the problem yet? As well as the games, there's also novels, activity books, toys, pop vinyls, plushie, and a movie that's been in production since 2015. Do you see the problem yet? I'm not trying to spit hate onto the franchise, or trying to say that it's a dead horse that's been pummeled enough. I have a lot of respect for Scott Cawthon and what he's built up over the years, but there was a time a few years ago where the series almost hit breaking point in terms of how many games were being pumped out. FNAF 1 came out on the 23rd of July 2014 and absolutely exploded in popularity, so a sequel was bound to come out. Five Nights at Freddy's hit his fourth game by the time the series was one year old. Do you see the problem yet? The series was booming at this time, but some people were starting to get wary of the franchise as, like I said, four games came out by its first birthday. By the next year, it was getting kind of obvious that the series was getting a bit too big too quickly and started to turn people away. But why? When you have a brand new viral video game, it's usual for people to start thinking about making a sequel and FNAF 2 arguably came out at the peak of the hype, but people felt that the next two installments came out thick and fast and thus were turned away from it. This can be attributed to market saturation. Oh god, he's talking about economics. Market saturation is when a product has been maximised so much that the market becomes saturated. Thanks Alan, it's not like it's in the name. And thus, people start to get turned away by it as there's too much of the same product. The market isn't as demanding as it used to be. However, I believe Scott Cawthon saved the franchise by not only taking a step back and releasing less games per year, but also changing up the formula of the games. Changing up how games work helps to not tire out people as the experiences become more different. For example, Sister Location was a more story-driven game, Beta Rainer Simulator had so many different mechanics on top to break up all the horror pots, and FNAF VR just made you crap your pants in FOR 3D! This is a great way to get out of the saturation hole, by making the new experiences more defined and more unique than their predecessors. And that is why, for me, I, th I feel that FNAF saved itself from being too oversaturated. Bigger. Star Wars! Do I really need to explain the series? <laughs> Have you been living under a rock? It's a franchise about a big war in the stars. Well, they got the plurals the wrong way around. Everyone remembers when Star Wars came back in 2015 to critical acclaim, and so did Rogue One and The Last Jedi. <laughs> and Solo became the lowest grossing film of the franchise. Remember what I was talking about with market saturation? You again! This is a recurring theme when franchises start to take the L. It also didn't help that the film franchise was put down since episode 3, that came out 10 years prior, so people got bored. Like me. It also didn't help that the quality of the mainline films tanked, apparently, and people started to dislike the direction of where Disney was taking it. I've seen people refer to the series as becoming a cash cow for Disney. I want one. 
Another thing that can kill a franchise is its reputation, and Star Wars' as one was fleeting. Take Battlefront 2 for example, people thought it might be good. <laughs> There isn't much I can say. Star Wars, while beaten to a pulp in fans' eyes, still makes money with the merchandise, TV shows and films, except Solo LOL, and will probably stick around for a long time to come. Oh, thank goodness. Nobody cares anymore. Does anyone remember the Guitar Hero and Rock Band games? <laughs> no you don't! These two franchises were at their peak in the late noughties and the Guitar Hero games were a critical success, gaining high scores with every entry and were considered a cultural phenomenon, garnering a massive fan base and yearly releases. These games exploded in popularity, but unlike the other two franchises I've listed, Guitar Hero and Rock Band are barely even seen anymore and faded into obscurity. So what happened to them? For those of you who don't know, have you been living under a rock? Guitar Hero were rhythm games where you had a guitar controller and had to follow the button prompts on the screen to play them with the corresponding fret buttons on your controller. Simple premise, big bucks. When the series first started, people couldn't get enough of the games and Guitar Hero and Rock Band released new games every year until they, you know, died. So, you may be thinking, hold on, FIFA and Madam do the exact same thing, but they're still selling games, and to you I say, shut up. Remember when I said that the two series release new games each year? Instead of one like FIFA, they had released multiple games and spin-offs with every flipping year. In 2009 alone we got... Guitar Hero 5, Guitar Hero Metallica, Guitar Hero Van Halen, Guitar Hero Smash Hits, Band Hero, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero on Tour, Guitar Hero 5 Mobile, The Beatles, Rock Band, Lego Rock Band, Rock Band Unplugged, Rock Band Mobile. Do you see the problem yet? You want an oversaturated franchise? This is the cream of the crop. Critics said the Guitar Hero games were milked to death and the market was saturated to the extreme. What didn't help was that the games didn't innovate from one another except for more songs. Check out this footage. This is from Guitar Hero 5, and this is from Guitar Hero World Tour. See any difference? Well, that's just kidding, they're both from World Tour. People started to get genre fatigue, and instead of going, Oh boy, another Guitar Hero game, they went, Oh boy, another Guitar Hero game. Many criticised how much the franchise squeezed out games, and sales started to decline rapidly until the series was put down. Until 2005, when they tried again, and... Oh. Oversaturation can be damaging to any product out there, no matter how big or small, where your roots are from. Too much of the same thing can just end up destroying something that you've created. But it is possible to build up from the oversaturated roots and come back with a more grace and a renaissance, maybe. Yeah, that works. So you may ask yourself, how do you stop yourself from being oversaturated in the first place? What can I do to stop myself from nailing my coffin too early? Don't squeeze your franchise into a pulp, you morons!